So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a live build test environment, how to set it up and configure an external device to connect through your home Wi-Fi or your office Wi-Fi connection to your computer and whereby dynamic updates will take place on your device when you make alterations to your game or your app on your PC. Hi, welcome back. My name is Angela McCall. This is Point and Click Puzzle Games, a small YouTube channel dedicated to helping people learn how to program in the Lua programming language. Now, we do so through mobile app game development, and in the last few videos, we have been working on a tic tac toe mobile app game. But in today's video, I just want to step away from that series just a little bit to do something whilst it's fresh because of some challenges I've had with my own PC environment in the last couple of days whilst running a live build test environment. And this also comes off the back of the fact that I've had a couple of private emails come in through my YouTube channel uh, with people basically saying they're stuck trying to do this thing for themselves as well. So if you haven't been here before, please do subscribe, click that bell to stay notified and put any comments or questions below the video and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, so let's just quickly walk you through what I'm doing today. So I have my daughter's Kindle, um, as you can see, and basically I want to simulate what my app will do in a real world environment because working in the Corona simulator is fine and dandy, but it's a simulator, it isn't actually 100% its own standalone device. So they, clever chaps at Solo2D, have created a way for you to do a live field test environment. So everything dynamically updates whilst you've got that connection through to your device, whilst you do changes on your apps. Okay, so one of the things I do need to make sure that you are aware of is that updates to the Solar 2D game engine and updates to the Java kit or the development kit that you will need to have installed on your computer will also uh, take place by the powers that be at Java. And when you do a live build test or even a proper publication of your app release and you want to deploy it to the various different app stores, you need to make sure that your Solar 2D and your Java development kit is running the very latest updates because if you're like me and you kind of forget about these things and then you go to do something which you haven't done maybe for a couple of months uh, and it suddenly stops working you're like what's going on and my challenge this weekend was that my Java software on my computer had basically uh, been updated in two or three editions actually if I'm really honest with you and so the live build process and indeed the actual signing when I was doing a proper release of my app wasn't taking place properly. So before you do anything, make sure you're running the very relate latest release versions of both Solar 2D Game Engine and Java. Now that you've got your homework done, let's dive on over to my left-hand monitor screen where we're gonna look at an app that I've recently started to work on. I'm on a little bit of a quest at the moment in my business to release a lot of these little point and click puzzle games like the traditional things that you might have played as a kid at school. And we're gonna walk through now how to do a live build. So because I'm working on a Kindle and that is essentially an Android environment, we're going to do an Android test right now. In a moment, I will show you where you can find more instructions on how to fill out all of this information. But essentially, you've got your application name, a version number and a version name. This package, uh, the instructions inside the, the Solar 2D environment say they... It has to be unique, that's the main thing, but to give you a suggestion, they sort of reverse the path of where your app is kind of stored and on the website that that is sort of powering it. So that's why it comes up with this default. Now, whilst you're in a, in a sort of test environment, that doesn't matter, okay? And then by default, because we just had the game open in the background, it already notes the path to where the project lives. Now, obviously, um, if it's a Kindle, it's powered by Amazon, but actually what I found whilst you're testing Google Play or Amazon, one of the same sorts of things, both work on this technique that I'm showing you today for a live build. Now, this is where things get a little bit funky. This key store, let me open up my browse button here. And what you can see up here is my debug.keystore file 
is, or program I should say, is on my computer C drive, program files, Corona Labs, Corona Resources. You definitely need to make sure that this is sort of the one that's being selected whilst you're in a debug mode or a, or a live build test, shall we say, because the live builds don't work when you're doing a sort of a professional release and you wanna sign it uh, directly. So whilst you're doing a live build, you need to make sure that this debug key store is actually selected in this box here. And I just wanted to show you the path of where it is on my computer, just in case you've set up your computer and you've just accepted all of the natural default paths, it should be something pretty much the same and similar. Uh, this will then naturally create a, an alias key for you. So just leave that as is. And then the last thing that you do need to bear in mind is that we need a way of getting the file from my computer onto the external device. Now, the way that I've chosen to do this, you could email it to yourself or do a file share through OneDrive or something like that. The quickest and easiest way that I've found is to have a Dropbox account and then install the Dropbox app on the Kindle itself, which is what we'll pick up with in just a second. Second. So if we come back over here, that's where the file is going to be built and saved to, the APK file. And then last of all, because we're going to do a live build test environment, I have checked this box at the bottom. If you don't necessarily want to do a live build and you just want to create an APK file to test the app, you can work just exactly the same way through this process. Just uncheck the box uh, that says create live build. Whilst I'm filming, the test run of this video did take about three minutes for this build process to take place. Uh, normally it takes for an app this size about sort of 70, 80 seconds for me. So you can see here that the build it process is taking place and this little yellow warning over here is just saying because it's a live build test and I'm using the debug store, I'm self signing a certificate for this particular release and build of the project. So obviously I can't, it doesn't really mean that I can publish it live to the app stores, although Amazon will allow you, Google Play won't. Okay, so uh, that build process has just finished. It says your application was built successfully, which is great. I'm gonna click on the word done. And then what's popped up here is the Corona Live Server. Again, this is another reason why you wanna make sure that your entire sort of Java and development interface and environment is all up to date because this is plays a huge part in how it now sends signals to your device in order to update it. So I'm going to just change to a desktop view and turn on my daughter's Kindle. If you can see here at the bottom of the screen, I've got my Dropbox account. I've already signed into it. And if you look up here right now, let me see if I can get this to focus properly. There you go. All right, you can see that I've got two files, an AAB, which is like a bundle for Amazon or Google. And you'll need that for when you publish live to their store and interface. But we've also got the APK file itself. And over on the right hand side, what we need to do now is get the APK file from the cloud, from Dropbox, down into my uh, device. So I'm gonna click on the export button. Okay, and then it's gonna to say to me, what do I wanna do with it? So I'm gonna save it to the the device now this will ask me just to name it I don't know if you can see that there sorry this isn't the best way of doing an example so I'm just going to hit save and leave it to its default now this does take um, about 30 40 seconds on an app this size to basically download um, I don't know if you can see there's a little bar underneath it at the moment now that that has happened I can go to my actual documents folder on the, on the device and now in my documents folder, you can see here, I've got the APK file. So that's great because it's now on my device but it's not yet installed. You can see my camera reflection, so I do apologize guys, but I'm just gonna click on it. And now what it's gonna do, it's obviously gonna ask me to double check, but it's down here, I've got the button to inst install it basically. So this is gonna take a few seconds. You can see just there, I know the light's not great, but it's, it is installing at the moment. There you go, it says app has installed. And now we can click down the bottom here where it says done. Okay, right. So now the app is on the device itself. So if we come back to the main home page, all right, what we will see now is if I slide up, as you can see, I haven't yet actually given the icon to the file yet, but I'm just gonna click on it now and you can see that it's installing or it's initializing, I should say, for the first time. It might flash around a little bit. And there you go, my app is now creating. Now, 
Woo! It's gonna just take a second. I think it's because it's the first time it's just been installed. So there we go. Now, the thing that you need to bear in mind is at the moment, this is a separate instance of the same file, but it is actually being programmed or powered, shall we say at the moment, with a live connection through to my PC. So at the moment, um, there you go, it says move, not allowed. I can play the game, everything is working fine. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm on like the game and I'm on like level one, okay? So all I'm gonna do, and I just want you to see what happens to the device. Now you're not gonna see me do this, but I'm just gonna literally hit save and update the game on my PC. And as you can see there, it just refreshed and re basically run the game and it's gone back to the play button. So I haven't touched this, as you can see. Um, I know you didn't hit see me do the save, but all I've literally done is do control save to update one of the uh, files in the in the game in the app and that has triggered the corona live server to basically update this game now obviously there wasn't any particular changes because this is a, an app that's pretty much now at the state of being published but again if i go in there and i show you i'm on a particular game maybe i'm sliding things around and something has given me a challenge or i come up with an error and i want to fix it and i get to this point and i'm like oh pants and obviously I want to test every one of my levels. Um, I can literally go back onto my PC, hit control save on the particular file I want to edit and it will take me through this whole re sort of updating the app and bringing it live and that change will then populate through. What the change doesn't necessarily do is when you're on a live build, it doesn't necessarily work when you are doing changes to things like the config file or the build.settings file. It's really only the gameplay scenes and any modules or libraries that you've created of your own device or if you've got any overlay scenes. It's the actual scenes themselves that are kind of controlled by the composer environment that gets updated when you do a live build. So the last thing that I wanna make sure that you're aware of as well is if you are, when you are doing a dynamic update, it has to be the same kind of version that you've exported or built out because if you was to go to file clear project sandbox and then sort of wipe the game memory completely and utterly free uh, this is kind of like a different instance or a different variation of the file and it doesn't necessarily connect through to the live build that you've put on even though you've got this connection still up and running it's kind of lost the same program file as it were. So you wanna make sure you've kind of finished that process before you wanna go into a live build environment because the connection will be broken you through the live server and it won't propagate through the Wi-Fi to the device and the live server really won't keep the connection because it's a sort of a different instance of the same game. So I hope that kind of makes sense anyway, but the, the rule of the thumb here is basically if you're gonna do lots of things that's gonna affect the, the, the project sand that box and the device memory that you're going to be creating and saving things to, the live build process will fall down. So make sure you've kind of done that and simulated all of that as much as you can inside the Corona simulator. When you're at a point you think you're ready and you're happy, then create the live build and then you can test that way as well. But that is pretty much essentially it. So what you have to bear in mind is that the file itself is an APK file and it just needs to be sort of technically downloaded from your computer onto your device. And then once you've got the file physically stored on the device, you then have to install it. So you just go to your documents, you click on it to open it, that will run the installation. And then it's just like you would have downloaded the app from the main place, uh, you know, the app stores. And then you've got this live test environment. And if you've got that box checked, then your Corona Live server will operate and then everything will be dynamic. If your computer goes into standby, that live server connection probably will be broken and you might find that you need to do a debug release again through the live build in order to get this situation running. So that's it from me today on this video. I hope you followed through the logic of what I have just showed you and I hope you found it really useful. If you do have any questions or comments, please do put your comments below. I will answer them. Click that bell to stay notified and I'll see you on another video real soon.